Hey guys, I've got an exciting video for you today. We're gonna to be doing a first look at the brand new Natasha Denona Biba palette. This is her neutral 15 pan eyeshadow palette. I just ran to Sephora and ran home and picked this up. So this is a first impressions, a first look at this palette, but we're gonna do some swatches. I am gonna do some comparison swatches to some similar shades that I found in the Safari palette, the Tropic, the Sunset, the Star, the Camel Palette, and the Mini Nude Palette. And I'm also gonna be playing around with the shadows actually on my eyes. So if you're interested in any of this, we're gonna get into it right now. This palette is being sold exclusively at Sephora, uh, I think until April, I think is what was mentioned on Natasha Denona's Instagram post, uh, but it's being sold exclusively online at Sephora and also in stores. I ran to the Fashion Show Mall this morning, picked this up so that I could do this video for you guys, get it up as early as I can. Um, as far as I understand it, this is not a limit limited edition palette. This is going to be a palette that is part of her permanent line, which is really fantastic. And here is the outer packaging here. It's basically the same uh, packaging that she did for the Safari and the Tropic palette, not like the Sunset and the Leela and the Star and those palettes. So this is a hard plastic. It has those holes in the back so you can pop out the pans, which is really, really great. And then on the inside, we've got the Great Big Mirror, which is great. And then what's even better, my favorite part about these palettes is that the names are printed on the inside instead of that plastic sheet that I still have very mixed feelings about. So here's a close look at the palette on the inside. Now, according to Natasha Denona and her Instagram stories that she posted about this new palette, the top row is supposed to be the most uh, brown based. I guess you could say like the warm leaning neutrals are at the top. The middle row has more of like a reddish undertone and then the bottom row is the coolest. There are three different formulas in this palette. There is her creamy matte, there are her cream to powder formula, and then there's her metallic formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at some swatches. I'm gonna do them row by row. So the top row from left to right, we have rustic, which is a metallic, prairie, which is a creamy matte, cocoa, which is a creamy matte, freckle, which is a creamy matte, and Shine, which is another metallic. On the next row, and again, this row is the one that has a little bit of a reddish undertone. The first color we have is Pasha, which is a creamy matte. Monroe, which is a metallic. Rayon, which is a cream to powder. Buff, which is a creamy matte. And Tone, which is a cream to powder. And then the last row, which again is the coolest out of the three, the first color we have is Seed, which is a creamy matte. Tor, which is a cream to powder. Sculpture, which is a creamy matte, Spot, which is a cream to powder, and Tusk, which is a creamy matte. So my first observation when opening up this palette, this is a what she calls an all neutral palette. I don't actually think any of these colors are very neutral. I think the most neutral color in here probably is Seed, which is this brown color here, maybe even uh, Tusk, but the rest definitely lean in one direction. These three are obviously very cool. These are obviously very warm. And these with the red base, I think that they maybe out of all three rows, this is the most neutral, but again, in, to my eyes, it leans definitely a little bit warm. So I think when she says neutral, I don't think that we're actually getting a lot of neutral, neutral shades in here. I think what you're gonna end up with is a neutral, everyday wearable kind of look. I think that's really the best way to interpret the word neutral because again, I just don't find that these shades are actually very neutral. You guys let me know down below in the comment section, but I will say this, I do think that this is the most neutral palette of hers. All of her other palettes, definitely have a very strong undertone, making it lean one way or the other. Sunset obviously is very, very warm. Gold has a really strong yellow, green undertone to it. Uh, maybe Star is the only other palette I find to actually be a little bit more neutral than this one, but even that has some like pops of color in there. Um, the Tropic palette, the Safari palette, even the Safari palette, which at first I thought, oh, I think that one is more neutral than this. I don't think it is. Side by side, which you'll see in a little bit, the Safari palette actually looks like punchier. It looks like it has a lot more like vibrancy and color to it. Um, so I do think that this is her most neutral palette out of all of the ones that she's created, but I can't say that it's actually very neutral. 
So I'm gonna have timestamps down below, but I think what I'm gonna do now, because I'm just getting really impatient, I just wanna play with these shadows, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start digging into this palette, and then afterwards what we'll do is some comparison swatches with shades that I found to be similar with all of the other palettes that I have of hers. So let's go ahead and do that. I have all of my makeup on aside from eyeshadow. I have everything, eyebrows and everything. So I put up a poll on my community tab in YouTube asking you guys if you would like to see a look using the top row, the middle row, the bottom row, or mixing them all up, and mixing them all up one by just a hair. So 34% of you voted for mix them up, 33% of you voted for the bottom row, the cool, and then the rest was the middle row and then the top row. The top row, which I was surprised, uh, came in last. And I guess it's because everyone is just kind of sick of like warmer tone brown shades. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix them up, but I will focus on the cool row since those were so close. You guys would be so proud of me. In preparation for this video, I even washed off some of my eyeshadow brushes. There's a first for everything. I am gonna go in with my Tom Ford number 13 blending brush. I'm gonna go into Tusk. I just wanna see how this one looks on my lid, if it's something that I can kind of use all over. And just to let you know, I don't have any primer down. I have concealer and powder over it, and that's it. Going on really nicely, like all of the other Natasha Denona creamy mattes that I have worked with. This is really nice, and the shade works really well with my skin tone. It's just a little bit, you could probably see, it's just a hint deeper than my uh, skin tone, so I don't think that this is something I can use to like brighten up my uh, brow bone area or anything like that. So for me, I probably could have used uh, a shade that's a little bit lighter in here, but that's okay. I don't get really riled up when there's uh, no like brow bone <laughs> highlight shade in the palette. All right, well, this color so far is reading very, very neutral on my lid, which is great. I think a lot of you were curious about this sculpture color. So I'm gonna go in with this shade. I'm just gonna put that like all over my lid. And this is another creamy matte shade. Beautifully pigmented, another shade that I find very consistent with her other creamy mattes. It's pigmented, it's blending out nicely. So I just wanna mention, I'm having a bit of a, like an eczema issue here and here, so I feel like the shadow is um, not really blending that well over there, and it's really not the fault of the shadow. It is my skin, it's kind of, the patch here is like a little bit rough. So anyway, if you see any kind of weirdness there, that is the eczema. I'm just gonna take my Tom Ford brush and blend that out. I'm gonna take my Hakuhodo S127 brush. I'm gonna go into this Monroe color and I wanna put this on the inner portion of my lid and just blend it into that gray sculpture color. Ooh, I like how icy that Monroe is. That's really pretty. I think I'm gonna try and take just a little bit of this buff and kind of buff out that <laughs> upper edge of that shade. I feel like the Tusk is not nearly as uh, deep enough of a color, but I don't wanna go too crazy. Just wanna add a little bit of dimension up there. Yeah, like just, just a little bit. All right, next I'm gonna use this Tor color. It just looks so cool. Uh, I'm gonna use my uh, Isom W36 brush and I just wanna use this to deepen up the outer corner of my eye. Yep, just a smidge in there, I like that. It adds like a really nice shadow. Okay, so far I'm really, really loving this. So I think I'm just gonna end by using this uh, black spot color and just lining my uh, upper lash line and maybe just part of my lower lash line. I don't wanna get too smoky.
All right, so that is it for this demo. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, apply some mascara. I think that's all I'm missing. And then I'll be right back and we'll do some comparison swatches to the other Natasha Denona palettes. All right, I'm back. I just threw on some mascara. Let's go ahead and jump right into the comparison swatches. So we're gonna compare Biba with the Safari palette first. And the Safari palette is an all matte palette. So there are no metallic uh, shades that are similar in here. But here's just like an overhead side by side shot of the two palettes, one next to the other. And this is what I was talking about. I hope you guys can see this uh, in the footage. But you know, the Safari palette, when I got that, I thought, oh, it's so, you know, subdued. All the colors seem really muted. They seem like dusty versions of the colors. But sitting it next to this neutral Biba palette, it actually looks quite punchy. The colors actually look quite bright in here. So I thought there were gonna be like a lot of very, very close dupes. But I think I only found three really, really close dupes. But I compared six shades here. So we're gonna go from left to right and we'll do this in all of the arm swatches. But on the left is the Biba palette. And then on the right is going to be the palette that I'm comparing it to. All right, so first we are comparing the Tusk in Biba to the Aya in Safari. And then next we're comparing Sculpture to Stone in Safari. Next we have Prairie compared to Tamarind. And then these are the colors that I find to be very, very similar. So we have Coco next to Thorn in the Safari palette. And then we have Buff from the Biba palette compared to Amhara in Safari. And then we have Seed from the Biba palette compared to Shea in the Safari palette. So those are the six shades that I found to be similar between those two palettes and really just those last three comparisons I found to be very, very close. The first three were just similar. So let's go ahead and move on to the Tropic palette. For the Tropic palette, there is a direct dupe, and the one shade that is not totally brand new in the Biba palette is actually from the Tropic palette. So that is this Cocoa shade. So that is the same in both palettes, the same name and everything. So that's the same in both the Biba and the Tropic palette. And that's what you'll see on the left-hand side. And then the only other colors that I thought looked kind of similar, and they're, they are similar, but they are definitely very different, is Freckle in the Biba palette compared to Fake Tan in the Tropic palette. Freckle is obviously uh, a bit deeper and Fake Tan I actually find to have like a little bit more of like a yellow undertone. So here's like an overhead shot of the two palettes next to one another. And I know there was a lot of talk of, well, if you have the Tropic palette, do you really need the uh, Neutrals palette? And well, I can't tell you what you need or what you don't need. We don't need any of this, but um, I don't think that the shades are actually very similar at all. I find the neutral shades in Tropic to be much uh, pinker in tone, and then there are ones that are a little bit more yellow. So again, the neutral palette ends up being a little bit more like more neutral than Tropic. Again, I don't think it's a very neutral palette, but it is more neutral than the Tropic palette. Next, let's go ahead and compare it to the gold palette. So again, let's go ahead and just take a look at an overhead of the two right next to one another. And like I had mentioned earlier in the video, I find the gold palette to have such a strong yellow undertone overall. Uh, some of the more brown colors on the right-hand side of the gold palette, those lean a little bit more neutral. But again, looking at it next to this Biba palette, I find it to be uh, so much more yellow and green leaning. But I did find four shades that I thought to be fairly similar. So here we have Prairie next to Dijon. And then we have Freckle compared to Aria. And then I compared Rustic to Varus. And Varus is actually cooler in tone than Rustic. And then finally, I compared Seed to Log in the gold palette. So those are the four shades that I found to be the most similar in the gold palette. So let's go ahead and compare this Biba palette to the Sunset palette. Here's an overhead shot of the two next to one another. And surprisingly, when I put them next to one another, there really aren't as many as I thought possibly. Similar tones that I saw were actually in different uh, formulas, like a creamy matte maybe looked uh, similar to like a metallic shade in the sunset. So I only compared this shine color right here in the Biba palette to this bronzage shade in the sunset palette. But I have to say, putting these two palettes next to one another, they really felt like very complementary to each other. So if you have the Sunset palette, this could be a nice like auxiliary palette for that one. Next, let's go ahead and uh, throw it back to the Star palette. Let's take a look at these two next to one another. 
And the star palette up until this point I thought was the most neutral, so I was really expecting to find quite a few dupes in here. And I'm actually comparing um, four shades from the Biba palette to three shades in this star palette. So again, I'm comparing Freckle in the Biba palette to Attic in the star palette. And then next what I did was I swatched um, one shade from the Biba palette, one shade from the star palette, and then one from the Biba palette. Pretty much just sandwiched the color that is in the star palette because I wanted to see which one it was closest to. So the first Biba palette I have down is Shine, and then I have Bellatrix down from the star palette, and then I swatched Monroe from the Biba palette. And then next I swatched Seed from Biba, and Earth from Star. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at it compared to the Five Pan Camel palette. And again, this was another palette I thought for sure, like all of these colors were gonna be duped, but the Camel palette, much like the Gold palette, it really has a lot of strong yellow undertones. So again, the Biba palette looking at it next to this Camel palette does look a lot more neutral. So the only shade that even looks remotely similar to anything in the Camel palette, and it's not even that close, is this Rustic shade. I compared to this copper stone shade in the camel palette. And then finally, let's go ahead and compare it to the mini nude palette. And I apologize for my swatches. They're starting to look a little janky here because my arm is like so wet and it was a little bit raw at this point. But anyway, I went ahead and I compared Freckle to Quion, Quoin. I don't know, Q-U-O-I-N, this shade in the mini nude. And then I compared Monroe from the Biba palette to Lumino in the mini nude. And then I compared Pasha from the Biba palette to Soil in the mini nude palette. They both had a really nice, rich red undertone. These are very, very similar. So that is it for my comparison swatches. My first thoughts are this is a beautiful Natasha Denona palette. I think if you're a fan of her shadows, if you're a fan of um, neutral kind of everyday wearable looks, this is the palette for you. So far, I'm really enjoying it, but I've only used six shades in here. So what I'm planning on doing, uh, maybe next week when I can spend a little bit more time with this palette, I'm gonna do like a three looks, one palette, just to give you guys a better sense of this. Being that it's not limited edition, there's really no rush to kind of run out and get it. But I know you guys are very, very curious of my thoughts on this palette. And I'm a neutral, everyday eyeshadow kind of person. I love color every once in a while, but realistically, this is the kind of palette that I'm going to reach for much more often. I just I just feel like you can't get enough. Neutral palettes to me are like blue jeans, are like black sweats, are like the little black dress in your closet. Like I just can't get enough. So those are my first thoughts on this palette. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Please comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe before you leave. I would love that and I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.